Good evening, dear friends, and welcome to our Sunday evening Advent retreat. And I do apologize for being a little late. We're all having a few problems here with electricity due to the um, severe flooding, but welcome. And it's good to know that we're all okay. Could I possibly ask for a sound and vision check before we begin? That would be good. Brilliant. And I see this evening we have with us our dear sister Sue. We've got Margaret. We've got Nancy. And we've got a few not logged in. So you're all welcome. And let us begin. This evening I'm going to play a piece of music first. And I want you to just relax and enjoy day eight of our Advent retreat. Day eight of the retreat. God's word tells us that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. And I believe what the enemy has intended for evil or bad in your life. I believe that God can turn it around for good and make a way where there seems to be no way. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God. Hold me closely to His Son. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way, He will make a way. Sing it together. God will make a way, where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me, He will be my God. Hold me closely to his side with love and strength for each new day. He will make a way, he will make a way by a roadway in the wilderness. He'll lead me rivers in the desert. But his word will still be made. He will do something new today. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God, hold me closely to His side. With love and strength for each new day, He will make a way, He will make a way. You may be going through a situation tonight that seems hopeless, and you think that God has forgotten you. But he hasn't. His word tells us that he has inscribed us on the palm of his hand. And he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think. He can make a roadway in the wilderness and a river in the desert. He'll make a way where there seems to be no way. Let's sing it together. Oh, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God. Hold me closely to His side. With love and strength for His new day. He will make a way. 
get goosebumps do you there are times when we get so discouraged on this journey because we're human and even monks and nuns imams rabbis priests and holy men and women buddhist nuns and priests as well we all get discouraged we all get discouraged we get disheartened especially in this beautiful world I call the Cathedral of God, the landscape. When we see the inappropriate choices that some make, where they choose violence and hatred and greed to love. And sometimes you can get discouraged yourself where you feel, why are my prayers not being answered? We're human, but we're divine. And sometimes when you hear the words of that beautiful hymn or song that we played there, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. And an Advent retreat such as this is a heart retreat. It's a time of retreating from the mind, the nonsense of this world the negativity, the sadness. And it brings you back to your heart. And it invites you to be willing to trust your heart and all that your heart is guiding you to do. But over the years, so many would say to me, how do I know it's my heart and not my ego? Very simply, how does it leave you if what you hear in the silence of your heart, in meditation, for example, if it leaves you with inner peace, it is of the light. That light I give a name, the divine. But if it leaves you feeling pompous and arrogant and all sorts of mixed up emotions, for me, that isn't of the light. That's another energy altogether, usually feeding your ego. Well, tonight, day eight, the theme from Francis is caring for one another, caring for one another. So let us just reflect on some of the words from Francis. And we read let each one confidently make known his need to another, that the other might discover what is needed and minister to that brother. Let each one love and care for his brother as a mother loves and cares for her son in those matters in which God gives him the grace. And in the Christian Bible, in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 44 to 47, we read, All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all present. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home. And they ate their food with glad and generous hearts. With glad and generous hearts. Praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. And we're going to leave it there. And we're going to reflect. Can I dare ask you, 
did those words resonate with your heart? And if they did, what were they saying to you? What were you feeling inside? They broke bread and ate together. Let us now go on our journey with the Holy Family of Nazareth. But first, let us just be still and relax. And to do that, let us take a nice, deep in-breath. And in your out-breath, release any anxiety or tension to Mother Earth. And as we take another nice, deep, non-labored in-breath, we breathe in the love that is around us, the love of the divine. And in our out-breath, we grow love to all here and beyond. In our next in-breath, we breathe in the breath of God. And in our out breath, we blow peace to the world. And now relax. And just sense the peace and the love of all that is sacred to you. Empower you. Empower you in your mind, in your body and in your spirit to take back your power from those who have wronged you, who have hurt you, who maybe deceived you, and reclaim your dignity now as a child of the light, a child of the Supreme God and relax. Relax in the warm embrace of a mother's love. I want you to imagine that you are still walking with Jesus in the womb of Mary, this young Jewish girl, barely out of her teens, if any, and walking ahead of her, supporting the donkey, is Joseph, her husband. A much older man, but a wiser man. And you are there, walking with them across the Judean hills to Bethlehem. And as you relax, you are aware that in this relationship of three, you are like one spirit. You feel safe in their company and you feel loved. An unconditional love welcomes you on this journey. Sense the peace and the love of God. And you're walking along the Judean hills and though the terrain is treacherous at times with lots of stones and boulders, it is a beautiful afternoon the sun is shining, the air is beautiful and pure. And as you go up over this steep hill, upon your descent, you notice just further down there's a Bedouin tent. There are children playing. And their curiosity gets the better of them because they want to know 
who are these people coming? So the little children come running in their rags, barefooted, up towards Joseph, who strokes them, who loves them. And they haven't seen a donkey, maybe in their short lifetime, only camels. So they're curious to see this beast of burden, this beautiful little donkey with a young woman heavily pregnant on its back. And they come to you and they're pulling at your hands to come with them to the Bedouin tent. And Mary looks at you and said, of course you must go. We will join you shortly. So as you go running down the hill with these little children, they want you to play some games with them around the fire, where their parents are making some meal for a family get together. And the children are so excited with their little black faces. And you notice the simplicity the innocence and how warm and affectionate they are with you. Though you do not understand the language they speak, but yet all they're asking for is for your love. Because you are the first young woman they have seen who's not wearing the burqa who's allowed her face to be shown. Whereas when their mom comes from the tent, she's covered head to toe, wearing a burqa, only revealing her eyes. And they're fascinated by your hair. And some are stroking and playing with your hair. Some are teasing you but they want you to form a ring around the fire. And they start singing for you in their native dialect. And they're happy and you're happy. And soon Mary on the donkey arrives with Joseph and there's great excitement with this family. They allow you to sit with them they allow you to eat with them and they allow you to rest with them. And you notice a peace, a perfect peace. And in the satchel on the donkey, you reach for your book, not to make notes, but to read. And you open the book and it says, know that you are loved. And you read about the first life of St. Francis by Thomas of Salam. He says he was always occupied with Jesus. Jesus he bore in his heart, Jesus in his mouth, Jesus in his ears, Jesus in his eyes, Jesus in his hands. Indeed, many times as he went along the way, meditating and singing of Jesus, he would forget his journey and invite all the elements to praise Jesus. <clears throat> and you go on to read, and Mary asks you to read out loud. And you read this. Have you ever noticed the ways in which we remember the people we love? We carry photos, place pictures in our offices. 
replay certain songs, bring the person's name up in conversation, and celebrate special anniversaries. The same could be said of Francis. Wherever he went and whatever he did, Francis wanted to remember, to remember Jesus' personal love for him. One day, while walking along, along a path, he noticed two twigs crossed, and as he stopped to reflect on Christ's sacrifice of love, tears welled up in his eyes. It would be easy to assume that Francis recalled the suffering Christ out of guilt for our past sins. But this would be a narrow interpretation. Francis had discovered the infinite possibilities of love and wanted to remain awake to the spirit of Christ that flowed through his being and through the world. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. For Francis, all things begin and end in Christ. He saw light shine from human faces and embraced a sacramental universe. He never felt alone because he trusted that Jesus walked at his side and was a source of divine guidance within. Is it any wonder that he sang praise with his companions and called all nature to praise the Christ. His participation in the infinite stream of love made him a mouthpiece for divine energy throughout this world. In The Way of the Pilgrim, a classic text of Russian spirituality, we find how vision is transformed by remembering Jesus. A pilgrim practiced repeating the name of Jesus throughout the day for years. As the repetition took root in his unconscious, he discovered that his heart was filled with happiness and peace, and his relationship with the natural world took on a sacramental quality. Not only did I feel this in my own soul, but the whole outside world also seemed to me full of charm and delight. Everything drew me to love, and thank God, people, trees and plants and animals. I saw them all as my kinsfolk. I found all of them the magic of the name of Jesus. And we read, relax, breathe deeply, and as you inhale silently, invoke the name Jesus. Practice this prayer throughout the day. And Mary looks at you because she realizes that you are reading something from the future something that she knows a little of but doesn't fully understand for she has not fully incarnated yes she's incarnated as a woman who becomes the mother of the son of god but when she ascended into heaven and became queen of heaven she would have known such things but the children kept coming to you to play and you couldn't resist their innocence and their charm and they introduced you to many simple games that we so often take for granted playing with stones playing piggy beds they even had an old rope and they would use it to go skipping Bedouin style. 
and they'd even introduce you to getting on a camel and little children would introduce you to walking with the camel. And now the time had come for you to resume your journey with Mary and Joseph and say farewell to this beautiful Bedouin family. So all of you come together for a group hug. And in that group hug, the little children are in the center with the children's mom and dad, grandparents, aunts and uncles, with Joseph and Mary and you on the outside, forming a circle of love. And in that embrace, you experience the true meaning of unconditional love. It's as if the earth stood still and all of a sudden you became aware of a gentle breeze. It was the spirit of the Most High who again had come upon you all and around you, you could see and sense a circle of angelic beings of light with Michael, Gabriel, Raphael and Uriel, Israel, Moroni, Aziel, the whole choir of archangels had formed a circle around you and you could hear the most exquisite singing because love was present and wherever there is love, there is God and wherever there is God, there are the messengers of God. And in the distance, you can hear the angelic voices It is melodic, it is soothing, and it is a prayer. And the little children are quiet now because they can see because of their innocence. And they're dazzled by the bright light that's piercing the ring of family and friends. And they know that here the messengers of God are breathing new life into all present and sending healing, protection and love. So Mary says goodbye to all of the children and one young mother comes out from the tent who had just given birth. And she asked Mary, would she like to hold the child? It was a little boy. And she embraced it as embracing her own. And Joseph came to her. And it was like their own delivery and there was joy in their heart holding this helpless babe just minutes on. And Mary passed the baby to you for you to give it a blessing and you held it in your arms and the baby was speaking to your heart. It was sharing with your heart a message of love. The divine was speaking through the baby to your heart. Be still and know that I am God. 
and you hand the little baby back to its mom, who looked weak and exhausted, but had to come to say goodbye. And now Joseph assists Mary on the donkey and you escort Mary and Joseph on your journey to Bethlehem. And as you look back and wave to the little children and their family, there is great joy and celebration. They're singing and they're dancing, having met the three of you. And so forth we go now to Bethlehem. Another day nearing the destiny. But night is soon approaching and it's time in the next hour or two to make camp and settle for the night. And we read this beautiful prayer to conclude today. Lord, during this hectic season, I often become so absorbed in my own little world that I am not attentive to the needs of others. Help me to express my own needs humbly and to meet the needs of others but to do so graciously. By doing so, may I be drawn into a closer relationship with others and with you. And here we have an Advent activity for the next coming day. Let a friend or loved one know of a personal need and give him or her the opportunity to be of service to you Take time to ask a friend, a co-worker, a family member, how could, assist, how could you assist him or her today? So let us reflect on those words and in our heart, let us be still as we give thanks to the Father, Mother, God who created you and all of us here in love. Be still now. Be still and know that you are loved. Be still and know that you are a child of the light, a child of God. Relax now. Relax. Relax. And I would like to wish you a blessed day or night wherever you may be in the world and I would like to conclude by sharing with you a very old ancient Celtic blessing the blessing of heaven the blessing of earth the blessing of sea and sky on those we love this day and the blessing of heaven the blessing of earth the blessing of sea and sky the blessing of Brother Sun and Sister Moon and the Animal Kingdom be in your hearts and in the hearts of those you love this day and for every day you live. Namaste, Shalom, Inshallah, Paxet Bonum, Om Shanti, Solo di Caritas, Salam Alaikum, Peace and thank you for being here with me on this eighth day of Advent. God bless you, and I look forward to your company again.